Hello, welcome to the Andrew Lavery Show, where we talk about investing in the stock market and where we talk about using the stock market to help build wealth over time so we can all become self-made millionaires. In this video, we are going to analyze Northrop Grumman to see if they're a good investment or not. And we're going to analyze them just as I would as if I was considering making an investment in the company. If you stick around to end this video, I'll let you know if I think Northrop Grumman is a, is a good investment based on everything that we see. And I'll let you know what I think a fair share price is and how I came up with that fair share price. Before we move on, I want to encourage everyone to hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and notification bell. I post new videos all the time. Before we dive into the analysis real quick, everybody, I have a brand new t-shirt out on Amazon. Future Self-Made Millionaire. Got multiple colors available, 10 colors in total. It's men, women t-shirts. Uh, you got uh, different sizes available, so definitely check this out. There's a link down below in the description. All right, so getting on with the analysis itself here. First thing I look for is, does Northrop Grumman pay a dividend? Yes, they do. You can see it right here on the summary tab. For dividend and yield, they happen to pay $6.28 a year per share, which is 1.56% of the current share price. So they pay a dividend, but let's get a little bit of history on that dividend. First thing I'd like to see is how many years in a row has Northrop Grumman increased their dividend, whether it's a small increase or a big increase. How many years in a row have they increased their dividend? And it happens to be 19 years in a row. I like to see a minimum of 10. So that's really, really good. 19 years is awesome. So what I want to check now is these dividend increases, are they keeping pace with inflation at the very least? So I would do is come to the payout history. And I go to 1996. And you can see here in that year, they paid 80 cents a share. So I come to U.S. inflation calculator, put in 1996, put in the amount of 80 cents, and then hit calculate. Just to keep pace with inflation, Northrop Grumman would have to be paying $1.42 per year per share. They're paying $6.28. So they're keeping pace with inflation since at least 1996. But I do like to do two samples since the history is long enough. And I'll do something more recent. Uh, coming up here, we'll go 2016. $3.50 is what they paid. So let's come back to U.S. Inflation Calculator and put in $3.50 and calculate. Just to keep pace of inflation since 2016, Northrop Grumman had to pay $4.07. They're paying $6.28. So outpacing inflation by a mile. That's excellent. I come back to Yahoo Finance, click Statistics. And I want to make sure a company is profitable. That's the first thing I look for. So you can look right here, profitability, profit margin, operating margin. I always want these percentages to be positive. We'll take a little deeper dive into operating margin in, in a little while, later, little, excuse me, a little later on in the video. Got tongue-tied. Um, but these percentages do look very, very good. Higher is always better, but at the very least, I'm looking for positive percentages here. If they're negative, the company is not profitable, spending more money than it brings in. That's not a good thing. All right, so management effectiveness. Um, you definitely want a company that's managed well. If it's not managed well, it's probably going to have problems later on. And you can look at the return on assets and return on equity to get an idea of how well the management is doing or not doing. And these percentages here, you always want to be positive. At least I do. You know, to each his own. But I always want to see these percentages to be positive. Again, higher is always better. We'll take a little deeper dive into this return on equity, but my guess is that this is going to prove to be very, very good return on equity. We'll confirm that a little later on in the video, but these all these percentages here are looking very, very good. Next, I look at is quarterly revenue growth. YOY is just year over year, so they're saying right now this is negative 4%. So the revenue for this quarter that we're looking at now, which is third quarter of 2021, they're comparing it to the third quarter of 2020. In the third quarter, or the revenue for third quarter 2021 is 4% less than the third quarter of 2020. So a little bit little, little bit of dip in the revenue there, at least just comparing just the two quarters. Um, you do see that from time to time. I don't get too upset if I see a, at least a small negative percentage here. If I'm seeing a big negative, say negative 30% or 50%, then that's a little different story. But a small negative like that, it doesn't concern me too much. But I do prefer to see a positive percentage. I would want to see Northrop Grumman turn this around to somewhere in the positive range at some point in the near future. Next, I look at quarterly earnings growth, again, year over year. 
So the earnings for this quarter that we're looking at now is 7.8% higher than the same quarter one year ago. Uh, so that's excellent. You got, you know, revenue took a little bit of a dip, but the earnings improved. So that's definitely a good thing. Um, again, I like to see positive percentages here, even if the, the, the percentages are really small. Um, at least a positive percentage at the bare minimum. But if I do see a negative, especially a small negative, like a quarterly revenue growth, um, I, I don't get too upset with that. All right. Next I look at, I want to know how much debt a company has. MRQ is this most recent quarter. So we got $14.15 billion in debt. And to determine if that's a lot of money for Northrop Grumman to take on, you can look at the total debt to equity ratio. And 123.91. That's a very, very low debt to equity ratio, which is very good. That lets me know that this $14.15 billion is not a lot of money for Northrop Grumman to take on. So that's excellent. Um, if this percentage, if this number was much higher, say 500, 6, 7, 1,000, then that would say that this total debt amount is a lot of money for Northrop Grumman to take on. But it's very low. Ideally, I like to see under 100 for debt to equity ratios, but I've invested in companies that are in the 300s. So this 124, almost 124, doesn't bother me at all. This lets me know that this debt load is very manageable and, um, you know, um, manageable risk. So it's not, not a whole lot of uh, exorbitant risk to take on here. All right. So coming up to financials next. And by default, we land on the income statement, which is good. That's where we want to be. All numbers are in thousands. We're looking at the annual numbers. So I just want to look at the revenue. I want to make sure the revenue is going up every single year. If the company is to grow, the first thing that has to grow is the revenue. So, um, and that's exactly what we're seeing here. Even in this TTM, which is trailing 12 months, which is basically all of 2021, we'll see the final numbers here when they, when they come out. But this is basically going to be the 2021 numbers. And it looks like we're going to see an increase in revenue, about 500-ish million. Um, increase in revenue for 2021. So that's great. So they're increasing revenue consistently every single year. Awesome. Uh, next, I want to go to cash flow. Again, all numbers are in thousands. Looking at the annual numbers, hit expand all. And I want to come all the way to the bottom. And I want to look at right here, this last row, free cash flow. And I want the free cash flow to increase every single year as well. And this is important for me because this is where your dividend money comes from. Free cash flow is important for other reasons, but for at least for a dividend paying company, and the reason why I'm looking at it is because this is where your dividend money comes from. So if the free cash flow is going up every year, that there's a good chance that your dividend will go up as well. Never a guarantee, but a good chance. So we have an uh, increase in free cash flow here, but then it decreased and looks like it's probably going to decrease again. A slight downward trend overall when you look at 2018 and what looks like will be probably the 2021 numbers. So a slight downward trend, not the best thing there. Um, I definitely like to see overall at least an upward trend, even if you have some ups and downs, at least an overall upward trend. But now we got an overall downward trend. So it is what it is, but I, uh, this is not. This is pretty much the opposite of what I, what I like to see. All right, so next thing I want to know is the, the dividend payout ratio. And I usually just do it for the most recent year. So this is the 2020 column right here. We'll... I know this is probably going to be 2021, but the numbers aren't official yet, so I'm not going to do it. I'm going to stick with 2020s. And you can hear, you can see your common stock dividend paid, and you can see the number right there, 953 million. The number is minus because that's money leaving the company. So what I want to do is move this over to start and do 953. Um, you know, I'll have to put all the extra zeros on the end. Um, so do 953 thousand is what the way it looks don't put the number negative and then divide that by the, the free cash flow so divided by two eight five six, six, zero and 33 percent so they paid out 33 percent of their free cash flow in dividends that's a nice low payout ratio i like payout ratios under 50 percent and that's to help give the company a buffer if the free cash flow was to decrease from one year to the next like it has and looks like two years in a row um, the company still has plenty of room to be able to pay out or to be able to increase their dividend because they're only paying out such a low percentage maybe the year prior. So with the fact that this in 2020, the percentage was so low at 33%, the free cash flow decreases by about $400 million. They can say increase their, their dividend to an even billion, we'll say. And they, they're still fine. They're still good to go and they can still make that dividend payment. Their payout ratio is going to go up, but they can still have enough free cash flow in order to pay that dividend. 
So that's why I like to see those lower payout ratios. Next, what I look at here is this finance, this little chart here. Here, so we saw 2017 numbers, which is good. Uh, revenue, if for the green bar, blue is in earnings, and ideally, I want to see revenue and earnings go up every single year. Which the revenue we have, we are seeing go up every year, so that's good. The earnings are a little bit up and down, so we have 2.87 billion in 2017, slight increase in 2020, or excuse me, 2018. And then a decrease in 2019, and then it rebounded a little bit here to 3.19 billion in 2020. Um, a slight upward trend from 2017 to 2020, so that's good. So if, yeah, if, I'm not, if I'm not seeing the consistent increases every year, if I can at least see an overall upward trend from the oldest year to the most recent year, that that makes me happy. That, that's good enough. So and that's that's what we're having here. So um, this chart's looking pretty good to me. The earnings are seem to be improving, and the revenue is improving improving along with it. All right. So next, I will go to ETrade. ETrade is my broker. You can use whoever you want, but um, I'm not logged in here, so you can, you don't need an ETrade account to do this. And I come to the fundamentals tab, and these little paragraphs I like to read. So it says Northrop Grumman's. Debt to equity ratio indicates it has been more aggressive with using debt to finance growth than 66% of its peers in the same industry. So that's not too bad. I mean, it doesn't concern me a whole lot just because their debt to equity ratio is so low. But this is still a paragraph I like to read and make myself aware of and see how they stand, you know, in comparison to their peers and using debt to finance the growth. But, you know, they're above average with using debt to finance growth. But like I said, their debt to equity ratio is very low, so it, it doesn't concern me at all. Profitability. Um, North, Northrop Grumman's gross margin is comparable to other companies in the aerospace and defense industry, which means it has relatively the same amount of cash to spend on business operations as its peers. So average in that regard, I like to, I always like to be above average, but you know, average is okay um, with you know with regards to that gross margin, as indicated by the operating margin. Here's that deeper dive. Oops. Northrop Grumman controls its costs and expenses better than 84% of its peers, so that's awesome. Uh, well above average in that regard, and that's very, very important to control those costs. Next here, management effectiveness. The return on equity for Northrop Grumman shows it is able to reinvest its earnings more efficiently than 91% of its competitors in the aerospace and defense industry. So they're, they're um, well above average in that regard, so that's awesome. That return on equity is very, very good. Um, yeah, a little room for improvement there, but not much. So this, this is excellent to see here. I'm very, very pleased to see this. Um, that's the last thing I will look at with regards to just overall analysis. But what about that share price? Let's take a quick peek. And right here, let me make this screen a little bigger. All right. And let's give, a, I, want to, I want the formula bar up too for you. All right, so the current share price as of today, which is January 19, 2022, it closed at $401.65. I calculate a fair share price at $266.52. I came up with that. I got the average dividend yield, which I just went to, I just took two samples each year going back to 2008. So I went to January 1st, 2008, figured out what the, the annual dividend was at that on that particular day. And what the closing share price was, and then from there I can get a dividend yield. I do this for June 1st, 2008, January 1st, 2009. All the way down the line, I get all these dividend yields, average them together. You can see that here, I got them all averaged together. And then came up to 2.36%. And then from there, I take the current annual dividend, which is $6.28, divide that by the average dividend yield, and get $266.52. So that by my estimation, just my humble opinion, Northrop Grumman is about 51% overvalued. So, wow, way overvalued. Good for them, though, whoever's holding the shares. You know, your, your shares are worth way more than I think they are, but um, at least more than they should be, but that's just my opinion. Overall, would I invest in Northrop Grumman? Um, not at this current share price. So, share price aside, I think they're a great company. They have a good dividend history. They're keeping pace with those, uh, their dividend increases are keeping pace with inflation, outpacing inflation, actually. Their debt's not a big issue. Their management seems to really know what they're doing. Uh, overall, they seem like a great company. Revenue is going up. Earnings are at least trending up. Um, overall trend is going up for the earnings. So they, they really seem to know what they're doing there. It seems like a great business, but way, way overvalued in my opinion. So I will keep Northrop Grumman on the list of possible companies to invest in, but only when the share price comes down and they become, um, a, you know, their, their share price is, is a more uh, a fair 
fair price. But so until then, I would have to say no. But they, I do think they are a very good company, and uh, hopefully they continue to stay that way. But as of right now, I think they are. So that's about all I have for everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm going to do dividend power video on Northrop Grumman, so check that out. I'm going to do a, um, a $1 million invested video on Northrop Grumman as well. If you invested $1 million in Northrop Grumman back in 1995, how much would your um, investment be worth today? How much dividends would you be collecting today? I'm going to do those videos as well, so check out those videos. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Take care. Bye-bye.